I'm Chuck Todd, and welcome to the Virginia gubernatorial debate between Democrat and former Governor Terry McAuliffe and Republican Glenn Youngkin, hosted by the Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the Shar School of Policy and Government at George Mason University, and NBC4 Telemundo 44. This debate is airing on NBC stations across the Commonwealth, nationally on C-SPAN, and streaming on NBCWashington.com, so welcome to all of you. It's also being aired on radio by our news partner, WTOP. Around here, that we know means a lot. We are pleased to be back in person for this debate tonight at the Northern Virginia Community College here in Alexandria. Our audience has followed vaccination and masking protocols to make sure that we can be together safely for this exchange of ideas. So let's begin by quickly covering the rules for today's event. The debate will last one hour and we'll begin with 90-second opening statements from each candidate. Then our panelists and myself will post questions directly to the candidates. These questions are determined by NBC News and the panelists, period. They have not been reviewed by the candidates or the Northern Virginia Chamber. Each candidate will have one minute to respond, and the candidate answering first will get an additional 30-second rebuttal. And as moderator, I will reserve the right to follow up as needed. And finally, we will conclude the debate with one minute closing statements from each candidate. There is a timekeeper who will notify candidates of their remaining time and when time has expired. In the interest of trying to cover as much ground as possible, we ask the candidates to adhere to these time limits. Thank you, gentlemen. So now let's welcome our panelists. Julie Carey is News 4's Northern Virginia Bureau Chief, and she's been covering Virginia politics for NBC4 for more than 25 years. Alberto Pimienta is our anchor for Telemundo 44 and covers the Latino community here in Virginia. And now the candidates, Republican Glenn Youngkin and Democrat Terry McAuliffe. You guys can clap if you'd like for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Get that out of the way. We know you're Thank enjoying you. both. And with that, let's begin. Mr. Youngkin, your 90-second opening statement. Great. Thank you. My fellow Virginians, tonight I ask you to join me. I ask you to hire me to go work for you. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a man of faith, I'm a job creator, and I'm a homegrown Virginian. Over the last eight years, Virginia has seen itself fall behind, seriously behind. Schools failing, murder rate rising, cost of living skyrocketing, and our economy and job machine stalling. But we can fix this. On day one, I will cut taxes. I'll eliminate the grocery tax, saving Virginians all in $1,500 in year one. We will reestablish excellence in schools, investing in teachers and facilities and charter schools. We'll fully fund police. We'll reinvigorate the job machine, creating 400,000 jobs. Now, my opponent tonight will say untruths about me, my plan, his record, and his extreme views. That's what 40-year politicians do. In our last debate, he lied to you, the voters, once about every other minute, trying to hide his views on getting rid of right to work, on defunding police, on selling out to the teachers' unions. His so-called plans will cost Virginians $16 billion, $5,400 each in a tax increase. It's recycled failed policies. My fellow Virginians, tonight I'll share my vision for lower taxes, for the best jobs, for the best schools, for the safest thank, communities. Thank you, Mr. Yankin. And I ask you for your vote tonight. Mr. McAuliffe, your 90 seconds. Thank you. I am so excited to be with everybody tonight. I was honored to be your 72nd governor. And if you remember when I took office, I inherited an economy that was in chaos. I got to work. I got out of bed every single day fighting for you. I worked in a bipartisan manner. And guess what? We created 120,000 new jobs. Personal income went up 14 percent. But now we have COVID, so we've got new challenges. So I've got 20 very serious plans of how I will lead us out of this COVID pandemic. I talk about raising the minimum wage, paid sick days. Talk about health care, bringing those costs down and making sure we drop the costs on prescription drugs. I did a billion dollar investment in education last time I was governor. I'm going to do two billion now to make sure our children are getting the skills they need in order to be successful. But none of this works if we don't defeat COVID. And I'm running against a candidate who actually has been spreading anti-vax rhetoric throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. We cannot move this economy forward and keep our schools open if we're not getting our folks vaccinated. He doesn't believe nurses and doctors and teachers should be vaccinated. I do. He goes on right-wing radio and says, quote, you don't want it, don't take it. 
He was also recently quoted saying, you know, there's many good reasons why you don't need to get vaccinated. He told college students, if you don't want to get it, just fill out an exemption for whatever the reason. And he just said that nurses working in cancer facilities on individuals who are getting chemotherapy don't need to be vaccinated. I will defeat Thank COVID you. as your Thank governor. You, it will be my top priority, and we will build a right. strong economy. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Look, we're going to begin with the COVID pandemic. Uh, obviously, it's infected 840,000 Virginians. It's killed more than 12,000 in this state. Uh, this is the clear difference right now between the two of you. Uh, is on the issue of vaccine mandates, as has just been brought up. Mr. Yunkin opposing them, Mr. McAuliffe supporting them for all workers who live in this state. So, Mr. Yunkin, you get the first question. You personally favor being vaccinated, but believe it should be a choice. But why should state teachers, healthcare workers, and other essential employees be allowed to do their jobs unvaccinated? Well, just to reiterate, uh, I actually believe that everyone should get the vaccine, despite the fact it's the most egregious untruth that my opponent continues to say about me. I've gotten the vaccine. My family has gotten the vaccine. It's the best way for people to keep themselves safe. And I, in fact, have asked everyone in Virginia to please get the vaccine. But I don't think we should mandate it. And I think we find ourselves at a moment where my opponent has said, he's looked at the television screen and he has said, if you don't get the vaccine, I'm going to make your life difficult. He wants employers to fire employees who don't get the vaccine. At a time when we are trying to come out of this pandemic, we're ranked 44th in the nation in job recovery. We need those healthcare workers. We need people on the job to make their life difficult. That's no way to go serve Virginians. We can do this. We can in fact protect lives and livelihoods. And as governor, that's what I'll do in Virginia. Uh, Mr. McAuliffe, your one minute. Let's be clear. Glenn Youngkin is the one who's been lying to you. He goes on right-wing radio and does his right-wing rallies and tells his supporters, his quote, if you don't want to get it, don't get it. You can't be governor saying things like that. That is disqualifying. We had 8,000 cases yesterday in Virginia. 10% of Virginia's population has been infected. We need leadership as governor, not trying to be a Trump wannabe, and doing the talking points, but he says one thing on right-wing radio and then come here, comes here and says something different. He has said, day one as he's governor, mass off and no vaccination requirements. Think about that. So you've got a parent who's got a child, a sixth, seventh grader, going to be going to school first grade. They can't get it because they're too young. And he's going to send a child to a school where the teacher's not wearing a mask and the teacher's not right. vaccinated? Thank that you. is disqualifying Thank to be you. governor. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. 30 seconds, Mr. Yunkin. I think what is most uh, hypocritical here is no more than five or six weeks ago, Terry McAuliffe actually shared my view that companies should not mandate. It should be a decision that companies should make. And then for political expediency, he must have seen a poll somewhere. He changed his view completely. This is what you get from Terry McAuliffe. It's whatever he thinks he needs to say to get your vote. Let me be clear. I believe the vaccine absolutely saves lives. I think the last 20 months has been an absolute right. tragedy. And I look forward to working with Virginians to get people vaccinated let, let me, and to help people live their lives. A quick follow-up to you, Mr. Youngkin. You believe getting vaccinated for measles, mumps, or rubella is a personal choice for Virginians? I think, I think that the... the, the, that the uh, uh, data associated with those vaccines is something that we should absolutely understand the difference between this vaccine. And we have a moment here. We have a moment here to help people understand the real information in this vaccine. So you would keep those so, vaccines mandatory? So that we could... So that those we, vaccines mandatory, but not COVID? Those, vaccine, those vaccines right. should, can be mandatory. I do believe the COVID vaccine is one that everyone should get but we shouldn't mandate it. All right, I want to move to the next question here. Mr. McAuliffe, this one goes to you first. Uh, your opponent's ads have say you're too dangerous for Virginia, pointing to the fact that during your first term as governor, murders per year percent, and rapes rose by nearly 30%. Uh, what responsibility do you bear for this increase in crime, and what would you do to reduce the rise we're seeing right now today? First of all, as governor, your job is to keep your community safe. As governor, I invested in our state police, our law enforcement, and our sheriffs. I got 1,000 sheriffs off of food stamps when I was governor. And guess what? Virginia had the lowest crime rate of any major state in the United States of America. I'm proud 
I'm the first governor to ever become an honorary sheriff from the Sheriff's Association. But if you want to talk about keeping people safe, we've got to keep guns off the street. And Glenn and I differ. He has said publicly that there is not one single gun protection bill that he supports. And then he said, let me be clear, none. We've passed background checks, and I support it. After the tragedies of Virginia Beach and Virginia Tech, we need to get guns off the streets. Today in Virginia, if a spouse goes on social media and says, I am going to kill my spouse, we can go in and take that gun away. Glenn Youngkin will roll back all common sense gun protections. So he'll not have background checks, and guess what? Criminals right. will get guns, they'll kill civilians, and Thank they'll kill law enforcement. Thank he you. is too dangerous to be governor of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Mr. Youngkin. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give this a minute. Well, I agree. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. All right, security. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Well, we are back live here in Alexandria with the two candidates uh, for governor of Virginia that are on this stage. We're going to pick up where we left off, and we're not going to take any other break. So we're going to plow right through and get to as many questions as we can. Uh, Mr. Yunkin, you have one minute. We've been on the issue of crime. You had heard from uh, Mr. McAuliffe. Now it's your one minute, and there will be a 30-second rebuttal. Thank you. Great. So over the course of the last uh, 20 years, we've watched our murder rate hit an all-time high. Mr. McAuliffe doesn't seem to care because the murder rate went up 43% when he was governor and the rape rate went up every year. Law enforcement has universally supported me. 50 sheriffs have supported me. Four sheriffs have joined the Republican Party. The Fraternal Order of Police endorsed me yesterday. The Police Benevolent Association has endorsed me. Law enforcement community wholeheartedly trusts that I will do the right thing will invest in law enforcement, will protect qualified immunity, will invest in a broken mental health system, will make our community safe again. What Mr. McAuliffe actually endorses is in fact a, a parole board that sacrifices the rights of victims in, in turn to protect criminals. I all believe in second chances, but we have to protect Virginians and on day one, we're also going to replace the entire parole board. Mr. McAuliffe, 30 seconds. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, let the facts determine here. We had the lowest crime rate of any major state in America when I was governor. Not the second lowest, not the third lowest, not the fourth lowest, the absolute lowest. That took a lot of work, and I leaned in. And I'm very proud as governor. I worked in a bipartisan way to get the toughest domestic violence law in the United States of America. The Washington Post has endorsed me, glowingly, and the Washington Post said that Glenn Youngkin's economic plan will defund the police here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Go read right. the editorial. Mr. McAuliffe, a quick follow-up for you. Uh, you said, your campaign previously said you favored ending protecting police officers from civil lawsuits, so-called qualified immunity, yeah. but then you said you wouldn't end it. Explain why you changed your mind. First of all, it's called qualified immunity for a reason. I have always said if any law officer is out acting in good faith, doing their job, they will have the full protection of the Commonwealth of Virginia. But if there is a law enforcement officer who breaks the law, they get zero protection. That's why we call it qualified immunity. So I have always been 100 percent for protecting any law enforcement officer every day who's out there. And I'm very proud of the men and women. I have the Fairfax okay. uh, Sheriff, Stacy Kincaid, who's here, is a big supporter of mine. All I right. thank her for being here. But 
But if you break the law, Chuck, you're not going to get qualified immunity. We will not protect it. So you but don't want to change, you're, gonna, you're not changing the law on qualified immunity? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Now, you should know that the General Assembly, okay. as you know, has a task force going. I they are looking that. at all this, and I'll see what comes to my desk. Julie Carey has the next question. Mr. Youngkin, in the first debate on the subject of abortion restriction, you said, quote, I do believe a pain threshold bill would be appropriate, unquote. Now, in Congress, a pain threshold bill would make performing abortions after 20 weeks of gestation a crime. That's in a woman's second trimester of her pregnancy. If you become governor, would you work to outlaw abortions beginning in the second trimester? Yep. So thank you very much for that question. And and let me start, because uh, my opponent has mischaracterized my, uh, my position here repeatedly. First, I am pro-life. I do believe in exceptions in the case where there's rape or incest or the mother's life is in jeopardy. I also believe that a pain threshold bill is one like the one in Congress that we could and should support. My opponent, on the other hand, is the most extreme abortion candidate in the country. What I know I will do is block legislation like he said he would sign, where a child is kept comfortable after the child is born when a decision is made whether that child lives or dies. He called that legislation common sense legislation and said he would sign it. The vast, vast majority of Virginians disagree with Terry McAuliffe on his abortion stance. He actually has said he's going to promote Virginia businesses to come, for companies to come to Virginia because it's the easiest place to get an abortion. I think that's shameful. Mr. McAuliffe, you're one minute. Uh, I'd like to see you release a tape with someone actually saying that. Uh, there's not a thing that Glenn Youngkin just said is true. And what he's done is he got caught on tape secretly saying that when he is governor, he will go on the offense to ban abortions and defund Planned Parenthood. And he says, I won't go squishy on you. That's what he said. But I want every woman in Virginia to listen to me closely. I was a brick wall to protect women's rights when I was governor. They tried to shut the 16 women's clinics down. And had I not got elected in 2013, there would not be a women's clinic open today. I support the laws that are on the books today, which 80 percent of Virginians support and a majority of Republicans support. That's what I support as governor. Glenn Youngkin is in the extreme. And I can tell you this. Businesses are not going to come to a state where they're putting walls up around their state. He's against gay marriage. He's against abortion. And that's his religious right. And I respect his right for his opinion. But I can tell you this, he right. cannot. The businesses that I brought to Virginia, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, okay. they are not coming thank to you. a state that discriminates against women. Thank you. They're not. Mr. McAuliffe, 30 seconds, Mr. Young. Yeah, thank you. Again, Terry, I just can't understand how you can just so comfortably lie to everybody. And let's just be clear. That's what you've been doing you, all night, you buddy. Stood up, you <laughs> stood up in front of a group of people and said that you would bring companies here because it was easier to get an abortion. You want to be the abortion governor. Let's be clear. Companies are not making these choices. Ford Motor Company decided to put four plants, $7 billion, two in Kentucky, one in Tennessee, and one in Georgia. They skipped Virginia. This is the legacy you've left Virginia a dying economy, okay. jobs that aren't for anyone, and you absolutely misunderstand what it takes to get companies to come right. so that Virginians can have very, the kind of future they very, deserve. Very quick, i got two follows for each of you on this issue. Mr. Young, and first to you. Do you support a right to an abortion being included in Virginia's Constitution? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, and Mr. McAuliffe, uh, you believe a woman should make her own decision on reproductive rights. But in the last debate, you said you support that right only through a second trimester. So just to nail this down, what restrictions do you support when it comes to access to abortion? I support the laws today that, Chuck, we have on the books here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, which, as I say, 80 percent of Virginians do. I would like to see Roe v. Wade enshrined in our Constitution because I'm scared of Donald Trump and the people like Glenn okay. Youngkin. Uh, the women are tired okay. of people like Glenn Youngkin I, telling I them it. what to do with their bodies. Right. It is time that I, men leave women alone and the, let them make their own choice about their Alberto, own reproductive rights. Alberto Pimenta, you got the next question. Uh, Mr. McAuliffe, uh, current Virginia Governor Ralph Northam recently touted a record $2.6 billion budget surplus. A portion of that money is dedicated to the General Reserve Fund, better known as Rainy Day Fund. Correct. You know that, right? Uh, your opponent calls that surplus clear evidence of overtaxation, and he's proposed returning $1.5 billion to taxpayers. Why shouldn't Virginians who've just gone through such 
challenging times during the pandemic reap some of this fiscal reward in the form of a tax relief? First of all, that $2.6 billion came from a $14.3 billion one-time American Rescue Plan money. So, as I say, when I took office, I had to call a special session to eliminate a $2.5 billion deficit that had been left for me, and I left a half a billion dollar surplus. I'll put more money in people's pockets. But Glenn always comes up with these crazy tax schemes. The Washington Post, the Roanoke paper, three independent studies have said that what he will do will destroy Virginia's economy. It'll take $10 billion out of education. You'll see 43,000 teachers cut, including 3,000 right here in Fairfax County. I mean, he loves his tax schemes. I mean, he even went to Fairfax County last year during COVID and had a faulty tax scheme because he keeps horses in his backyard, fancy horses, and actually got an agriculture exemption and basically chiseled Fairfax County out of $75,000 a year, which is actually a year's salary for a teacher. I'm not going to do that. You make hundreds of millions of dollars. And why are you chiseling Fairfax County okay. so that you can have an agriculture Thank exemption for your fancy you, horses McCall. in your backyard? I just think one, that's wrong. One minute to you, Mr. Yunkin. Thank you. So let's begin that the $2.6 billion surplus was actually generated by overtaxing Virginians. $4.3 billion went to, the federal, went to the state government from the federal government. Over $9 billion went other places. Terry, I know you don't understand you revenues have no and expenses. Clue what you're you have about, no idea buddy. what you're talking yeah. about, Terry. Revenues and expenses, yeah. I know, are hard for you. Yeah, well, you I know they great. are. That's why they toss you I know they're hard for you. <laughs> so, I know they're hard for you. That's why you got tossed but, out but, of your firm. But at the end of the day, Terry, you have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, so okay. What, I, what I believe is that money belongs to Virginians, not Terry McAuliffe. And oh, by the way, they're going to overtax us again by $2.6 billion again. They're piling on tax upon tax. So we're going to eliminate the grocery tax. We're going to double the standard deduction. We're going to declare the largest tax rebate in Virginia history. We're going to cut the taxation on our military retirement up to $40,000 that so they'll stay here. We, in fact, find Virginia losing out with families moving away to the other states faster than they're moving here because our taxes are too high, and we're going to bring them down and make our cost of living in Virginia lower. Go ahead. 30 seconds. Yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. Glenn Youngkin will have no ability to bring jobs here because he wants to ban abortion. He's against gay marriage. I got co-star to move to, to Richmond, Virginia, a thousand jobs. They're doing another thousand jobs because we are an open, welcoming state. I can tell you with his extreme positions, businesses won't come here. I got Nestle Corporation to move out of L.A., 1,100 new economic development projects, 20 billion of new capital when I was governor. That's a success rate. And I left a half a billion dollar surplus when I was in office. I inherited a two and a half billion dollar deficit. That's just a fact. And we created, guess what? All right. 200,000 new jobs and personal right. income we'll went up 14%. We'll I am very right. proud of that record. All right. Let me move to our next issue here. I get the next questions for you, Mr. Yunkin. Thank you. I want to turn to the issue of election integrity. Out of more than 4 million ballots cast in Virginia's 2020 presidential election, there was just one reported case of voter fraud. And that person was convicted this year of a misdemeanor. So, Mr. Youngkin, earlier this year, you said election integrity is a top priority of yours. But at the last debate, you acknowledged that there had not been significant fraud in Virginia's election. So if it's not a problem, why call it a priority? Well, election integrity, making sure our elections are trusted and safe, is not a Republican issue, and it's not a Democrat issue. But, of course, my opponent stood up and said in 2000 that they stole the election from us. And he said it continually, and he never acknowledged that George W. Bush was legitimately elected. We, in fact, saw after that Florida invest in their election, their election process and actually report first. Virginians deserve that. So we're going to invest in our election process so the Virginians trust it. I've said there wasn't, there wasn't material fraud, and I believe that the election was certifiably fair. But I want to get back to one thing a minute ago. My opponent mischaracterizes his record so, so acutely. Virginia, over the last eight years, <laughs> has grown economically 70% faster than the 70% slower than the states around us. Maryland, North Carolina, Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia, they have outpaced us by 70% when you were governor, 120%, creating more jobs and more opportunity. That's the legacy you have left Virginia. Mr. McAuliffe, your one minute. Election integrity. This is all Glenn Youngkin had on his website for seven months. This is all he talked about. He's actually said it is the most important issue facing Virginians. <laughs> election integrity, really? I think it's jobs, I think it's COVID, I think it's health care, I think it's education. Think it's you know why? 
because he's a he, he's a total wannabe Donald Trump. This is all goes back to the 2020 election that somehow Trump mysteriously, they put their tinfoil hats on, and all of a sudden Trump really won the 2020 election. But you know what runs down our democracy, and we shouldn't allow this to happen. But he said so much of the reason he's running for governor, his quote, is because of Donald Trump. He's been endorsed by Donald Trump four times. He said he's honored and pleased to have Donald Trump's endorsement. So, you know, he plays this game that he goes to his extreme people that he does on right-wing radio and talks about these issues and then tries to come here in Northern Virginia and pretend, oh, I'm some moderate. He's not. He's extreme on abortion, election integrity, and all these other issues. He right. is bought and paid for by Donald Trump. He wants to thank, bring Donald Trump-style politics thank, to Virginia, and we're not going to allow it. Mr. Youngkin, 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. So. Terry, you just made folks in Las Vegas a lot of money. And I know you love to go campaign there versus being here. But there's an over <laughs> First of all, I do there, love Las there's Vegas. A, there's an over Who and under tonight. There's an over and under tonight on how many times you're going to say Donald Trump. And it was 10 and you just busted through it. You're running well, against Glenn Youngkin. Younger. You're, ru you're and, running and against there's a Glenn Youngkin. I know you wish you weren't because the polls say I'm ahead, but you're running against <laughs> okay. me. Let's have Terry McAuliffe versus Glenn Youngkin, and let's decide, let's let Virginia voters decide who they want their next governor to be. It, it, right. the, reason, the reason Chuck is, yeah, uh, let, we, let's we be clear. To, the reason is, to the he question, has said, yeah. he keeps invoking right. Trump, he's endorsed four times. The only person invoking Trump is you. Yes. All right, go ahead, Julie, you got the next question. You'll both want to hear this. Mr. McAuliffe, your campaign website promises you will implement the Virginia Department of Education's new model policy to project protect transgender students. Now that's a policy that allows students to use the restroom and locker room that matches their gender identity and requires school employees to address students by their chosen pronoun. But in the last debate, you said it should be up to local school districts to be able to create their own policies. So which should it be, statewide protection or local choice? I like locals having input, obviously, on such an important issue, but the state will always issue guidance as we do from the Department of Education. But I've said this before. These children are going for, through very stressful situations. Why people continually want to demonize children, I just don't understand. I want every child in Virginia to get a quality education. I put a record billion dollars in education the last time I was governor. No matter the color of your skin or whom you love, I believe you should get a great quality education. And that's why I've called for a $2 billion a year investment. We got to raise teacher pay above the national average. I want every single student to get access to broadband. I want to make sure that those at-risk three and four-year-olds, about 41,000, actually get a pre-K education. I've got a real education plan. Washington Post and other papers have ridiculed Glenn Youngkin's economic plan. And they have said, just read it, that it will cost education $10 billion. You here in Fairfax County will lose 3,000 teachers. I want more teachers, not fewer. Mr. Youngkin, one minute. Thank you. Let me begin. The economic plan that Terry keeps referring to has nothing to do with my economic plan. He doesn't like mine because it's better than his, and he picked up another one and is using that for all of these baseless comments. Now, with regard to our kids in schools, we are called to love everyone, to love everyone. And I agree with your conclusion, Terry, that we should let local school districts actually make these decisions, but we must ask them to include concepts of safety and privacy and respect in the discussion. And we must demand that they include parents in this dialogue. What we've seen over the course of the last 20 months is our school systems refusing to engage with parents. In fact, in Fairfax County this past week, we watched parents so upset because there was such explicit, sexually explicit material in the library they had never seen. It was shocking. And in fact, you vetoed the bill that would have informed parents that they were there. You believe school systems should tell children what to do. I believe parents should be in charge of their okay. kids' education. Mr. Okay. McCullough, 30 seconds. So first of all, this shows how clueless Glenn Youngkin is. He doesn't understand what the laws were because he's never been involved here in helping Virginia. But it was not. It, the parents had to write to veto bills, veto books, Glenn, not to be knowledge about it, also take them off the shelves. And I'm not going to let parents come into schools and actually you take books out and make their own decisions. You vetoed it. So 
through yeah, I, parents. Yeah, I stopped the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. But, you know, Not I teach, get really tired of everybody running down teachers. I love, I love our teachers. And what they have done through own. COVID, these are real heroes that deserve our respect. All right. And you keep running Thank them down. You. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Alberto, you have the next question, sir. Mr. Youngkin, uh, Virginia has extended protections to ensure that Virginia uh, renters are not evicted until June 2022 due to the pandemic. What is your position on evictions? Yeah, I think that there's a really good legal framework in place to provide resources and support for people so that they won't be kicked out of their homes. I mean, we've been through a really, really tough pandemic. In fact, I think it's worse in Virginia than it otherwise needed to be. We're ranked 44th in the nation in job recovery because we have a stalled economy going in and we actually rank 50th in the nation in freedom coming out. I believe the number one way we're going to help folks with their rent is to get them jobs. Virginia created 44,000 jobs over the last eight years. North Carolina created eight times that amount. Tennessee, six times that amount. It's the legacy that Terry McAuliffe left us, a stalled economy, stalled jobs, fewer jobs today than we had before the pandemic. I'm going to go to work on day one. We're going to not shut down our economy, no lockdowns. We're going to cut job-killing regulations. We're going to turn on our job machine and create 400,000 jobs, and I'm going to protect right to work, and Terry McAuliffe's going to get rid of it, and it's going to be the death blow for Virginia. Mr. McAuliffe, one minute. Uh, first of all, if you read my plan, I have a whole housing plan. We need to put more money in the Virginia Housing Trust Fund. We've got to work with the federal government, get more waivers here for us so that we can keep people in their homes. That will be a top priority. Working in public-private, I just met with the leadership of Amazon the other day, just put hundreds of millions of dollars into affordable housing. So we need to do, especially up here in Northern Virginia, we need a lot more affordable housing. I have a whole plan of how we'll do it. Glenn keeps running down our economy. Well, I was working creating jobs. Let me tell you about Glenn's experience here. He took 300 jobs out of Virginia when he was the CEO. He closed the Arlington office, moved him to another state. When he was the chief operating officer, he was running a company called Small Smiles, which actually was cited a huge fine from the inspector general because what they were doing was unnecessary medical procedures on children. 100 cases in Manassas, babies were forced to have root canals, many of them without proper anesthesia. And why? He did it for profit. I was here working here in Virginia to create good paying jobs. Right. Well, he was making billions of thank, dollars thank for the you, Carlisle McCullough. Group and hurting seniors with manor care thank, and thank hurting you, children here with his Sir. small style uh, dental clinic. We're not gonna have that here. 30 seconds, Mr. Young. Creating jobs is a lot more than flying around all times places and holding press releases. I mean, Terry McAuliffe used $1.4 million of taxpayer money to pay to a Chinese website that turned out to be a sham. And all you did was have a, have a press conference and fly to China to celebrate it. You lost $1.4 million of taxpayer money and no job showed up. I am proud of Carlisle. One of the things I'm proud about Carlisle mostly is that when things didn't quite go right, when things were not where we planned, we worked hard to put them right. Okay. We had tens of thousands you, of Yankin. employees that worked for companies, and we wanted to serve I got, them. I got a quick, that's what we did. Yep. I got a quick 30 seconds yep. I want to give each of you on this one question. You both live in wealthy neighborhoods. You both live in a wealthy neighborhood. How do you convince wealthy homeowners that affordable housing should be built in their neighborhood too, and they don't fight it, because they're worried about property values. 30 seconds to you, Mr. McCullough, 30 seconds to you then. Listen, I think everybody here in Northern Virginia understands the desperate need. People who work here shouldn't have to drive two hours uh, to be able to work every single day. So what you do is you work with the local, the cities and the counties. And if you read my plan, I have a poll program together on regulations and zoning to make it easier for people to build affordable housing. And we'll invest money at the state level through the Virginia Housing Trust Authority so that we will invest with them, incentivize developers to build low-income housing. It is one of the biggest issues that we yeah. face here. And, it's the, and the reason is so many jobs. I recruited 1,100 yeah. companies to come to the Commonwealth of Virginia. Mr. I Yunkin, wrote the bid for do Amazon. You, do, you think your neighbors would, do you think your neighbors would support seeing duplexes built? Yeah, I, I, think every, I think every part of Northern Virginia has got different zoning requirements, and that is up to the local authorities. I think the biggest challenge we have in affordable housing is the mound of regulations that have been piled on top of businesses for the last eight years that all of a sudden have every house built in Virginia 
required 20 to 25 percent of the housing cost to, to actually get through permitting and regulations. We actually make it easier to permit, and we can bring down the cost of housing. We need more supply. Okay. The bottom line is Thank you. the bottom line is that when this economy starts really growing when I'm governor, yep. as opposed to the stalled growth Thank when Terry McAuliffe was governor, Thank we're you, gonna Mr. have a bigger problem and we're gonna have to All go right. to work to create affordable Al housing for Virginians. Alberto, you've got the next question, I believe. Uh, yeah. the removal of Confederate General Robert E. Lee statue that, reminds sorry. us uh, what are you saying? Uh, the removal of Confederate General Robert E. Lee statue reminds us how deeply race is woven into Virginia's history and that Virginia has sometimes been on the wrong side of that history, whether it's slavery, yeah. the Civil War, the state's former interracial marriage ban, or segregated schools. How should Virginia school children be taught about these issues? Yeah, and I was happy those statues came down. They were symbols of hate and divisiveness. And I also leaned in when I was governor. I banned the Confederate flag from the Virginia license plates. I think it's important that we send a message that our state is open and welcoming. But we need to teach our children the full history of who we are as a commonwealth and who we are as a country. I think it's very important. But those statues needed to come down. As you all know, I was a leader on voting rights. I enfranchised more voters than any governor in the history of the United States of America. That was the right thing to do. I was all about lifting people up, giving people second opportunities. And you know what? That's why I want to lean in and help folks next time. I want to see that we raise the minimum wage. I think it's disgraceful that some home health care worker goes in 10 houses a day cleaning bedpans all day and she makes $7.25 and she has no benefits. It's time to pay people $15 an hour here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Treat people with dignity and respect. Mr. Yunkin, one minute. Thank you. Um, What's interesting is how quickly Terry McAuliffe moved off of his statement when he was governor that the Robert E. Lee statue and the Stonewall Jackson statue should be left alone. Teaching our children about racism in our school is a real challenge. I think we recognize that Virginia and America has chapters that are abhorrent. We also have great chapters. We need to teach our children real history. We need to teach our children to come together and have dreams that they can aspire and go get. We don't need to teach our children to view everything through a lens of race and then pit them against one another so that their dreams are in fact stolen from them. On day one, we're going to get education moving. We're going to reestablish expectations of excellence. My opponent watered down standards in schools to the point where our children are falling so far behind in the Commonwealth of Virginia. 62% of Virginia kids cannot pass an eighth grade math equivalency test because of the legacy that Terry McAuliffe left us. We're going to go to work and fix that on day one. <laughs> Mr. McAuliffe, Once again, seconds. Glenn knows nothing about Virginia. Uh, I remind him of the bill that we passed on education reform. I had a Republican legislature. Guess what it passed, the Virginia Senate, which was Republican? 40 to zero. It got 85 votes out of 100 in the House of Delegates. You're attacking your own Republican Party, Glenn. It's just, you know, you get your Trump talking points. You understand the law of Virginia and how these things all work. And it, it's just not right. So I will invest in education. I will build up education. And that's what we need to do. And I'm excited about it. But his plan will cut okay. 43,000 teachers. Don't Thank take you. my word for it. Read the Washington Post. Read the three thank, independent thank, that have thank come Thank you, out. Uh, Mr. McAuliffe. Julie, do next I get, question. Should I get 30 seconds? No, nope. that was next my third. Okay, Sorry, buddy. Third. You'll right. get it again. you got to learn how right. to count. Next to question, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yelkin, yes, uh, as you know, thousands of Afghan evacuees are now here in Virginia at Fort Lee, Fort Pickett, and Marine, Marine Base Quantico after being evacuated from Afghanistan shortly after the Taliban took control of that nation. Do you support Virginia helping these evacuees resettle here and stay in the Commonwealth? And how should the state do that, if so? Yes, yeah, so let's, let's just start with what we saw happen in Afghanistan. We saw an abject failure of leadership from Joe Biden. He abandoned our military, he abandoned American citizens, he abandoned our allies, and he abandoned Afghans who had gone shoulder to shoulder with us trying to make a way forward. I think that we in fact have to recognize what failure of leadership looks like and, and the fact that Terry McAuliffe ascribes to all of this. We've watched failure in our border down in, down in Texas, it's absolute chaos, open borders. Can we recognize that we're a nation of laws and we need to make sure that we're processing everyone who comes in. Have they had a COVID vaccine? 
Terry, you want everybody else to get one? Have the Afghan refugees got one? Yeah, I do. I, I, I do I want think, to get one. I think we should, in fact, make sure that those that stood shoulder to shoulder with us are welcomed, that they're processed appropriately, and that they can have a home in Virginia. Go ahead, uh, Mr. McAuliffe, one minute. Sure, absolutely. These people helped the United States of America, and we owe them a responsibility. So I've always been for it, what we need to do. And let me tell you, we have a lot of brave men and women who have fought for this country. I, do. I have a son, Marine Captain, who served over in that region, fighting ISIS. And my heart goes out to every single parent who has lost a loved one in the service of our country. It wasn't a day that Dorothy and I didn't worry when our son was over there fighting. So I will always stand with our military and those that assist our military. That's why I was proud as governor. We were the first state in America to functionally end veteran homelessness. We were the first state in America to add all these college courses to make sure we could get our veterans jobs as soon as they came out of active duty. First state in America to have our cyber vets. And when I was governor, 26,000 more vets were hired through our V3 program. I love our military, and I'm proud of our military here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Mr. Yuckin, 30 seconds. You get the extra 30. Today we see more of our veterans moving away from Virginia than moving to Virginia. This year, it's estimated that 25,000 of our heroes will complete their last posting in Virginia and move away. And they're going to Tennessee and North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia, Florida, Texas and Arizona because Virginia is not the right place for them because they can't find a job. We tax their retirement benefits. We've made it hard for them to transition from military service to civilian life. I'm going to go fix all of that when I'm governor. We're going to turn Virginia okay. into the most military-friendly state in America. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McCall, if you get the next question here. When you first ran for governor in 2013, you opposed changing the state's right-to-work law. During your most recent primary race this yeah. year, you reversed course, and you now support it. Why did you change your mind? So first of all, right-to-work is not going to change here in Virginia. They finally got a bill up in the House of Delegates last year, and it was defeated 85 to 12. Can't even get a hearing in the Senate. So I'm going to focus my energies on things that we can do. I want to raise the minimum wage. I want paid sick leave. I want family medical leave. As governor, I always focus on things that we can get done. And that's what I'll do as your governor. And that's why I built, contrary to what you're hearing from Glenn, a robust economy. I inherited an economy from a Republican governor that had a gigantic deficit. And I left a huge surplus when I left office. And that's the reason why so many Republicans have endorsed me. Over two dozen prominent Republicans. Tonight, I have the leading conservative in America here, Bill Kristol, who has endorsed my campaign for governor. I have Delegate Dave Ramadan, one of the most conservative members of the House of Delegates. He's endorsed my campaign. Former senators, former delegates. Why? They know I'll work in a bipartisan way to move Virginia forward. That's why I'm back running for governor, to take Virginia to that next level. Thank I want to see call. us lead America out of this COVID crisis. Mr. Young, in one minute. Thank you. So let's be clear. The leadership in our Democrat Party today is trying to get rid of right to work. Luke Torian, who is the chair of the Appropriations Committee, said it was a top five issue to get rid of. The Senate Majority Leader introduced the bill last time to get rid of right to work. This bill is going to come to his desk and Terry McAuliffe will sign it. He said that, and the minute he said he would sign it, every union in America endorsed him. He's collected tens of millions of dollars from them. It will be the death blow for Virginia business climate. This is why every business organization in Virginia that has offered an endorsement so far has given it to me. Not to you, Terry, but to me. They don't trust you. This is about standing up for what's right for Virginia workers, not forcing them to join a union because you can get, you can get donations from them. We, in fact, have to recognize that Virginia's economy must grow, not be stalled. And we can go to work together to build an economy that will lift up all Virginians. And that's what I'm going to do as your governor. 30 seconds. First of all, I have tremendous business support. In fact, I think of the Shar School who we're at. Dwight Shar, National Finance Chair of the Republican National Committee, George Bush's Finance Chair. 
one of our biggest business leaders, founded NVR Homes. Who's he supporting? He's supporting me. I talked to him today. And why do so, <laughs> you may talk to him, great, what good's that do you? He supported, he's already endorsed me. He's already on my public list. Yeah, a lot of unions support me. You know why? I am for raising the minimum wage. He is against raising the minimum wage. He's against paid sick days. He's against family medical leave. You vote for Terry McAuliffe, you are going Mr. to get McCall. those done, and we are going to lift up workers here in Virginia and make them the best workforce Mr. in McCall, the United quick States of America. Quick 30 you. If, Mr. McAuliffe, if, nor, if, if the Amazon workers in Northern Virginia want to unionize, are you going to be there helping them? No. They, they, listen, businesses make their own decision, and... Uh, employees make their own decisions, whatever they want to do. I'm the governor well, for everybody support, here in the so Commonwealth you're, of Virginia. You're, you're, you wouldn't support employees trying to unionize in Northern I'd Virginia? I'd let everybody make their own decision. they got to do their own organizing. Of course, I'm governor. I'm the governor of everybody. All right. I love everybody. I'm a, I'm a lover. Let, let me, uh, Virginia is for lovers. Let me move to a, a climate change question. This is uh, one minute. We're getting a little low on time, so one minute to each of you on this. Uh, Mr. Yonkin, Virginians underpay for flood insurance, but overpaying also could reduce home prices. Dealing with climate change, the state, country, entire world are dealing with this. Yeah. Who should be paying more when it comes to these issues of flood insurance? Should it be the government? Should it be wealthier taxpayers? Is it someone else? How do we pay for this adaptation and mitigation? Well, minute to you first. The first thing, first thing we need to recognize is that we do have a challenge. We have a challenge. I'm from, I'm from Hampton Roads. And the challenges that Hampton Roads are facing right now with rising sea levels and, and stormwater drain issues are serious. And so we have to go to work now in order to address those. We have to go to work in order to make sure that there's funding available so that they can prepare for rising seas. The challenge that we've got, however, is that the plan that's been put forth with the Virginia Clean Economy Act is unworkable. I've spoken to the heads of the utilities. They don't even know how to do it, dismantling all of our clean burning natural gas. We're going to turn Virginia into California and get ready. Brownouts and blackouts are coming. And the reason why Ford doesn't want to come here is one of them is they don't trust our power supply. We, in fact, need to have a different plan. We need to embrace all aspects of power generation, wind, solar, nuclear and our clean burning natural gas. My opponent wants to accelerate this transition by 10 years okay. and it will absolutely destabilize Virginia and it will cost Virginia taxpayers even more right. than the $800 is expected now. Mr. McAuliffe, one minute to you. I want to see it done by 2035. When I think of clean energy, I think of jobs. Glenn Youngkin said, he, was, he just announced again, he's not for the clean plan that passed here. It's the only way we're going to make progress here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. When we finally rejoin the Paris Agreement to join the rest of the world to show that we're serious about it, he said it was totally frustrating that America got back in it. So he doesn't want to do anything on clean energy. I will be the clean energy governor. I have always said this. Let's do it by 2035. The opportunities we have. Yeah, Hampton Roads, they've seen their sea level rise by 14 inches since 1950. I worked hard. The Ohio Creek project that I did with the HUD, $135 million to save an African-American neighborhood to build the new seawalls. We've got to do that all over Hampton Roads. But what I think about, we have these two new wind turbines that are 27 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach. We're going to have 200 more in three years. I want to see all those turbines, blades. I want that manufactured here. I think the Portsmouth Marine Terminal, I truly believe, can be the green okay. energy manufacturing hub for the United States of America. That is America's future. Right, getting, and Virginia is going here. to lead the way, and that's going to be hundreds of thousands of jobs. A couple of quick questions for both of you, 30 yeah. seconds each. Yeah. Mr. Youngkin, should members of Virginia's Republican congressional delegation on Thursday vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill? Do you want Virginia's yeah. Republican members of Congress to vote for that bill that will provide money to Virginia? Yeah, I believe that there is, a, there is good future in the infrastructure bill. And I look forward to those funds coming to Virginia and putting them to work. I mean, one of the realities is when you have an offshore wind project that I wholly support, but you have people who have never run a business, never negotiated something before, negotiate, and all of the supply chain is not in America, not in Virginia. We should have negotiated American content, Virginian content in that. And that's what you get when you elect people to office who don't know how to run a business. They end up giving up opportunities and then coming back and trying to make it up after they've missed the boat. All right, before you jump in, Mr. McAuliffe, yeah. should 
do you support the $3.5 trillion package that Democrats are working on in Congress, or do you think that number should come down a little bit? Uh, let, me, let me answer. It is so frightening to listen to him talk about Virginia. Con we don't make it yet. We don't make it in a year in America. This is all a crazy talking things. points like Trump again. Nope, we need to build it here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We can't do it today saying we want the content in Virginia. It's, he's just clueless. I mean, it, it, this is not like a Carlisle, you know, portfolio thing you're trying to sell to investors. I mean, we got to deal with reality here. With I money, think the 3.5 is too high. Do you? Sure. But here's my message to Congress. I am really sick and tired of all of them. You know what? They ought to follow the Virginia model. When I was governor in a okay. bipartisan way, Chuck, I got education done, I got transportation done, I got veterans and economic development. We got things done. That's why so many Republicans have endorsed me. We do things in a bipartisan right. way. They got to stop their little right. shitty chat up there, and it's time for them to pass right, it. Let's get this infrastructure bill you. passed for America. 30 seconds each. <laughs> Mr. McAuliffe, you toyed with the idea of running for president in 2020. Do you pledge to serve your entire term as governor if you win this race? Yes, absolutely. And Listen, Mr. I looked at 20. That didn't go too far. So Okay. <laughs> uh, and Mr. Youngkin, if Donald Trump runs for president in 2024, will you support him? Yeah. Uh, who knows who's going to be running for president in 2024? And if he's candor? a nominee, will you support <laughs> him? Who knows? Let me just start. If he's, the Republic, if he's the Republican nominee, I'll support him. I want to just be clear. When Terry McAuliffe stepped in in 2014, he adopted the exact same tactics that the Democrats in Washington are using right now and tried to shut down Virginia's government. He threatened to shut it down. He forgets this because it's not pleasant for him to remember. And then in 2017, the rating agencies came and was getting ready to downtick Virginia because of his, his inability to manage fiscal responsibility. This is what you get with Terry McAuliffe. All right, I do need to answer that. So well, just so the gonna, facts are clear. We're, 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 the reason okay, they tell you we're going to downgrade is because of the debt that I inherited from the prior administration. And I flew to New York with Republicans with me. And guess what? All we right. negotiated it. I mean, Glenn, you just got to get your facts right, buddy. Terry, you okay. just I mean, we history. went up. You can call the senators, <laughs> the Republican senators history. who went to New York with me. It was because we had like a $2.5 billion hole All in right. our I budget. You You'll like get to facts. continue this debate after we're yeah. done here. Okay. But the good news is this. You each get your one-minute closing statements. And Mr. <laughs> Youngkin, I believe you go first I'm in first. this one. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. I'd first like to thank my wife, Suzanne, and our four children. You are amazing. My fellow Virginians, tonight I invite you to join me. Join me in breaking free from what has plagued our country in divided neighborhoods for too long. Broken politics, failed promises, failed leadership. You deserve better. My campaign was founded on a vision that would confront challenges, not people. That would deliver results, not excuses. It's time to summon the spirit of Washington, of Jefferson, of Madison, and yes, Mason, by coming together to build a Virginia that we can all be proud of, a Virginia that leads. Together, we will build schools that launch our students to new heights. Together, we will build communities by reclaiming our neighborhoods from crime. Together, we will build jobs and a rip-roaring economy that will lift up all Virginians. Okay. So join me tonight with a new vision for leadership, and let's build that Virginia together. Mr. McAuliffe, your one minute. Let me thank all of you. I am so excited to be with you tonight. But you just heard Glenn Youngkin introduce himself to Northern Virginia voters, and it was all an act. He wants to ban abortions. Let's be clear. He's against gay marriage. Let's be clear. He says the single most important issue facing Virginia today is election integrity. I don't think that's the case. I will work in a bipartisan way as I did before. That is why in 2017, Governing Magazine made me the public official of the year for the United States of America. I was proud of that. He said so much of the reason that he's running for governor, his quote, is because of Donald Trump. Well, I want every Virginia watching tonight. I'm running for governor for you. And if you elect me as your governor, I promise you this. I will raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks. I'll get paid sick days, family medical leave. I will put money into our education system so our children will learn the skills they need. And I'm going to make sure that all 700,000 Virginians get quality health care. I am excited. Right. Working together, this state's going to take off like a booster rocket. Thank you, guys. Let's go.
Well, thank Make you. Make sure you candidates. vote for me. Thank you to the Northern Virginia Chamber, the Shar School, <laughs> NBC4, Telemundo 44 for hosting this debate. Thank you. Terry McAuliffe and Glenn Youngkin thank for your you. participation. This is what democracy can look like in a positive way. Thanks to our great panel of Julie and Alberto and to the Northern Virginia Community College Alexandria campus. Thank you for the use of this theater. Stay with News 4, NBCWashington.com for continuing coverage of this election.